Hello, everybody. Robert Breaker here with you, and I'm really excited. What a great, great week and a great day I've had. It's been a blessing. So I wanted to come to you and give you some verses today and share some things with you, and I hope this will be a blessing to you. Um, I want to say thank you. Thank you. You know who you are out there. You really helped me. What a blessing. So I had a video that I did. It was the fifth video that I've done um, for the Cloud Church. And uh, someone today sent me something, um, and another brother in Christ, I believe, said that there was something in that video I said that sounded weird. And I went back and I watched that video, and I said, well, in context, I, I saw the context of it. <clears throat> but it did sound strange, and it did sound kind of weird, and I was like, I don't like that. So I'm going to take that video down. I'm going to re-edit it. I'm going to post it again. Because the last thing I want is a distraction. Right? The last thing I want is something in one of my videos that's confusing or something that's said that will take away from the entire rest of the message that is so important. And this message that uh, someone sent me this about is probably the number one message that I have on YouTube. Let me show you real quick. Here is an image of that message. And it was entitled, The Doctrine of Blood Atonement. The Doctrine of Blood Atonement. Now, let me see if I can go down. And I show you here on the bottom here. And here it says, Sermon for Sunday, October 26, 2014. So I've had that sermon up since 2014. The fifth sermon I preached in English. And I watched it again and I was like, boy, have I learned how to edit way better than I did back then. <laughs> but um, it's about the importance of the blood atonement of Christ. And what a great, great, great message that was. And like I say, that message... I've probably had more people tell me, Brother Breaker, I got saved watching that video than any other video. Well, that video there, I didn't allow comments on. And like I said, that was the fifth message that I did. And so I went through and I watched it and I re-edited it and made it a lot better. And uh, some of the things I said in there, I, I cut out. Like a lot of times I'll repeat myself or, or say something. Sometimes I'll say of instead of in or some silly little things like that. So I went through and re-edited it. But there was a little part in it where it sounded like I said something to the effect of Jesus committed suicide or something like that. Well, I know that I didn't mean that. Sometimes you say something that you don't mean and it's confusing. And I looked at the context about how Jesus died and he wasn't a sinner, but he did the work that a sinner would have had to do in the Old Testament. He did for us so that we, thank God, are no longer under the Old Testament. We don't do works. We don't take the sacrifice and put our hand on its head and kill it for our sins. That's something we don't do. Jesus did that for us. But it was a little, how would I explain that? A little strange, the way that I said that. So I want to say thank you. Thank you to that person who pointed that out. I appreciate that. That allowed me to go back and re-edit that video. And that video is going to go out even more because I'm going to repost it here in a little bit. And People have asked me, Brother Breaker, which is the video that you did that you have gotten the most testimonies of salvation from, from people getting saved from? And I said that one right there. And the video is entitled, The Doctrine of Blood Atonement. And just simply going through the Bible and preaching on the blood of Jesus Christ and showing the blood atonement. So many people have told me over the years, Brother Breaker, I got saved watching that video. Well, because that was many years ago when I first started here in YouTube, I didn't allow comments because I got a lot of haters. A lot of hate. Well, kind of still do, but that's okay. I love them, and I love you too, and I'm praying for you. But uh, I said, man, I want to make sure I post that. And I've, I've got to say, this has just got to be the Lord. Because I've noticed that every time I preach on the blood of Jesus, people get saved. So much of a blessing. What a blessing. So I'm hoping that uh, people watch this video and get saved from it. Now, what I'd like to do is I'd like to go through some verses with you and uh, do that real quick. and Just go through some verses real fast and uh, start with this one, I guess. Um, a lot of times we'll open our mouth and insert our foot. <laughs> I have, I believe now, over 1,500 videos on YouTube. And so, sure enough, I'm bound to have probably said something stupid on a couple of them. <laughs> And so I appreciate those that are um, out there and uh, are trying to help me. And I appreciate your help. I really do. And you that are trying to say, hey, Brother Rick, I watched your video and I saw this and that didn't sound right. 
let me know. Let me know because I don't want confusion and I don't want a video that has something in there that someone would, would, would pull out of context or would say, hey, this is wrong or, or would confuse them or, or something they'd get hung up on. I mean, if you watch the whole video, there's a lot of good in that video. And it's interesting how people sometimes just nitpick the little one thing. But I appreciate those that uh, showed that to me and said, hey, Brother Breaker, hey, um, this was said in that video. Maybe you should edit that and make it clearer. And I said, you know what? Yeah. Yeah, let's do that. But, you know, the Bible says this, and let's look at this here. In the multitudes of words, there wanteth not sin. But he that refraineth his lips is wise. In the multitude of words, there wanteth not sin. Well, what is that saying? That says the more you use your mouth and the more you speak, the more you're probably going to say something stupid. And I've done it many times, open mouth, insert my foot. I've said things that I'm like, well, did I say that? I'm so glad I can edit because sometimes I have to go back and editing and go, wow, I can't believe I said that. Where did that come from? Uh, one of my favorite videos on YouTube is, well, all right, go to YouTube and type in preacher pitch his tent, okay? And he's preaching about Lot or somebody and how they pitched their tent in the wilderness. It came out of his mouth wrong. <laughs> you will laugh your rear end off when you see how this, this preacher said it wrong and it came out of his lips wrong. And he said, pinch his, and he said some, it, it's just, oh, it's too funny. So if you want to laugh, look up that on YouTube, type into YouTube, preacher, pitch his tents. And so you've always got to be careful when you're preaching and teaching. Uh, you'll probably mess up and say something silly. And that's why I love being able to edit and I thank God for people out there that care enough about me, that are willing to help me. And if I do say something silly, they're willing to go, hey, Brother Breaker, hey, how about you, uh, how about you fix that? And so today, after posting the Sunday School lesson, I, I spent some time editing that video. It was called The Biblical Doctrine of Blood Atonement. But I'm just going to call it The Doctrine of Blood Atonement because that's the title that I had up on the board. But I just wanted to take you through some verses real quick. And just show you some things in the Bible. In the multitude of words, there wanteth not sin. The more you say something, the more you're probably going to say something stupid. Amen. But I do want to say thank God for the Lord Jesus Christ. And for his blood that he shed on the cross for our sins. And uh, thank God he willingly gave himself for our sins. And I know if you're saved, you want to thank God for that as well. And I just thank God for being a saved man. I thank God for salvation. What a wonderful thing it is to be saved. Amen. Uh, Matthew 20, 26. But it shall not be so among you, but whosoever will be great among you, let him be your minister. Amen. And whosoever will be chief among you, let him be your servant. And that's what we're supposed to do. I want to minister to others, and I want to be their servants. Amen. And I hope they want the same thing and minister unto me and be a servant. So, I'm trying to serve the body of Christ, and I want to do that. And I appreciate others helping me and saying, Hey, Brother Breaker, hey, this was on one of your videos. Maybe you want to fix that. Well, thank you. Thank you. I was happy for that and was able to fix that. Now, Genesis chapter 22 and verse 8, I actually speak about this in the video itself. I believe it's 22.8. I hope that's the right uh, verse here. Sometimes I write my writing down. I can barely read it. Uh, Genesis 22.8. And Abraham said, my son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So God provided himself. Jesus Christ is God manifest in the flesh. He is God who is come in the flesh. Amen. And he provided himself. Jesus gave himself for us. And he died for us on the cross. Uh, John chapter 15 as well. Just some verses I want to throw out there that uh, I believe are important. Because the message is Jesus dying for you in your place. Jesus dying for me in my place. It says here in John 15, 13, Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. And that's what Jesus did for us, folks. He laid down his life for us. He died in our place for our sins. Aren't, doesn't that make you just so thankful? Doesn't that make you so happy to know that he loved you enough to willingly die for you? He laid down his life for you. What a thing. Galatians 1, 4, who gave himself for our sins that he might deliver us from this present evil world according to the will of God and our Father, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Jesus Christ gave himself for our sins. He willingly died in our place for our sins. 
And uh, wow, wow. Uh, Galatians chapter 2 and verse 20. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Thank God for Jesus Christ who loved me and gave himself for me. And through faith, I can live through faith. And it's all about what Jesus did. I don't want to frustrate the grace of God for any reason. I thank God for Jesus Christ. Let's go to uh, 1 Timothy. just want to give you a bunch of verses here. Um, I hope this is a blessing to you. I hope you go back and watch that. I remember, that was the fifth video that I did for the Cloud Church. And I didn't have a beard at the time. I was a lot younger. And I looked pretty tired. I, I think I was really tired. So, you know, when you're tired, sometimes you say silly things. Something comes out of your mouth and you're just a little tired. Happens to the best of us, doesn't it? Uh, 1 Timothy 2.6, speaking about Jesus Christ, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. Jesus gave himself as the ransom for all. What a blessing. Thank you, Jesus, for that. Thank you for giving yourself for me and dying in my place. Thank you for showing me in the Bible that I can be saved through trusting in your shed blood. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, what a blessing. Look what it says here in uh, Titus 2.14, who gave himself for us. Who's that? That's Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people zealous of good works. These things speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority. Let no man despise thee. So amen. I want to do that. I want to preach. I want to teach what the Bible says. And I just want to keep preaching the blood-stained gospel of what Jesus did as he willingly gave himself. He shed his blood. He offered himself up for us on the cross for our sins. Um, Hebrews 7, 27 says, and it's doing a correlation between the earthly priest and Jesus the heavenly priest. It says, Who needeth not daily as those high priests to offer up sacrifice, first for his own sins and then for the people's. Jesus didn't have to do that because he had no sins. He, he's sinless. For this he did once when he offered up himself. Jesus offered up himself for our sins. Wow. Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 14. How much more shall the blood of Christ who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. Jesus offered himself up to God. There's, there's a wonderful song about the blood. Let's see if I can remember the words. I'd hate to start singing it and forget part of it, but it goes... A long, long time ago, in God's word we're told, God's people were filled with sin. And it seemed all hope was gone, and Satan had been won, and destined men to die. But Jesus said, send me the sacrifice I'll be, atonement for all their sins. And Jesus' blood that day, it washed sin away for all who will believe. It still takes the blood, it takes the blood of my Savior. It still takes the blood, it takes the blood to set my soul free. God's word will never change, it never changed. His word still remains the same. And Jesus' blood that day, it washed sin away for all who will believe. Now there's probably a second and third verse, but that's all I remember. But boy, I love that. I love that song because it has Jesus in heaven looking down and saying, Father, let me go down and pay as their sacrifice in their place for their sins. Wow, as their sacrifice. John chapter 10, let's look at some more verses here. So John chapter 10, Jesus Christ willingly came to this earth to die in our place for our sins. And I'm just so thankful for that. I'm just so thankful for Jesus who died for me and saved me from hell. Amen. John chapter 10 and verse 11, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. Jesus gave his life on the cross. Verse 15, as the Father knoweth me, even so I know I the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. Amen. Jesus Christ laid down his life. 
Look at verse 17. Therefore doth my Father love me, because I lay down my life, that I may take it again. No man taketh it from me. What an interesting verse. But I lay it down of myself. So Jesus, he allowed them to kill him. Because he said, no man could take my life from me. I mean, they could have whipped him, mocked him, stabbed him, and he still could have just gone, well, I'm not dead yet. Because he's God manifested in the flesh. But he willingly said, okay, I'll allow you to do it. That's just an amazing thought to me. Laura and I were talking about that today in the car. No man taketh it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it again. This commandment have I received of my Father. So Jesus from the Father had that power to be able to lay down his life. No man could take Jesus' life. No man could kill him before his time. And when it was his time, that's when he allowed them to do what they did to him and crucify him. And then he laid down his life. Go to 1 John chapter 3 and verse 16. What a thing. Do you ever think what Jesus would have done if Jesus said, you know what? No, I'm done with this. And they're stabbing him and, 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 and whipping him and mocking him. And he just kind of rips it out and jumps down and goes, I'm God. I'm coming back now in my kingdom. And he could have done that. He could have called, one preacher said it like this, he could have called 12 legions of angels and put them all in hell and started over. But he didn't. He died on the cross. He gave up his life for us, for you and for me. He shed his blood. Because of love, for God so loved the world. 1 John 3.16 Hereby perceive we the love of God, because he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. What a verse. If you love Jesus who laid down his life for you, then you ought to care enough about other Christians that you say, you know what? I love you so much in the Lord, I'd be willing to die for you, just as Jesus died for me. Do you love other Christians that much? That's what the Bible says. So I love you and I thank you and I appreciate you. You know who you are who pointed this out and helped me with this video. And uh, the part that seemed very odd and weird. And yeah, I, I kind of cringed when I heard it too because I heard it out of context. Now when I listened to it in context, oh, that's what I was trying to say. But I still didn't quite say it the way I wish I had. So thank you for pointing that out and allowing me to go back and edit that and change that. And uh, let's close with Hebrews 9.22. And almost all things are by the law purged with blood, but without shedding of blood is no remission of sin. It was therefore necessary. <sighs> Salvation is necessary. All men need to be saved. And the only way is through Jesus Christ who entered in, into the holy place, made without hands into heaven. And he put up there the blood, and he shed his blood. We're all going to die, as it is pointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. What did Jesus do? He suffered. Look at this. For then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world, but now once in the end of the world hath he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. He sacrificed himself for us. What a God. Whew. What a thing. So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin on the salvation. And that's what I'm looking forward to, the rapture. The sooner he comes, the better. Even so, come Lord Jesus. But until you come, Lord, please keep saving souls. So the name of the video I'll be posting shortly is The Doctrine of Blood Atonement. It's an old one from back in 20, I want to say it was 2014. Look at the description and see when exactly. October 20-something, 20 2014, if I remember correctly. And please watch that again. And if you are one of those many who told me that that was the one that helped you get saved, please write that in the comments and let me know. Say, hey, Brother Breaker, yeah, this was the video that I watched that showed me how to be saved. I would love to see that. That would be encouraging to all of us, amen, to the whole body of Christ. Because the message is all about that precious blood. The precious, precious blood of Jesus Christ. Um, well, I'm here. I might as well give you one more verse just off the top of my head here. Thank God for the purchase price of salvation. You know, you can't purchase your own salvation. You can't buy salvation yourself. Acts 20, 28. Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over which the Holy Ghost that made you overseers to feed the church of God. That's what I want to do. I want to feed you all the word of God. Which he hath purchased with his own blood. Whew. Jesus Christ purchased with his own blood the church. 
it's that purchase price. So I don't want to speak perverse things. I don't want to do bad things. I just want to preach right, pray right, live right, do right. And I, again, publicly thank you, whoever you were. You know who you are. I'm sure you don't want the credit. Amen. You don't want a glory. Uh, you want God to get the glory. Thank you for pointing out in that video that little part where I said something that didn't sound quite right. Because you've made it to where I could go back and I could edit it and make it even more uh, watchable. And, and, man, more people are going to hear the message of the blood and get saved because of you. Man, you're a blessing, and I appreciate you, and I can't wait. God is, oh, God is so great. God always does this, amen, and always brings up the message of the blood, and it just seems like every time, every time I preach a message on the blood, I see somebody get saved. So I'm excited. I'm excited about the blood of Jesus Christ and how it is the only thing that can forgive us of our sins. Um, like it says here in Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 7, and here it says, look at this, <laughs> To the praise of the glory of His grace. Amen. It's all God's grace. Wherein He hath made us accepted in the Beloved. In whom we have redemption through His blood. Amen. The forgiveness of sins according to the riches of His grace. Wherein He abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence. Amen. We ought to be wise. We ought to be prudent. We ought to know what's right. And I thank God for the blood of Jesus Christ. Over there in 1 Peter 1, 18 and 19. Excellent verses. Excellent verses. For as much as you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things, as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. Whew. Amen. Thank God for the precious, precious blood of Jesus Christ. You all know my testimony. You know it was Romans 3.25, the verse that I got saved on. And it says, in whom God... It says here, whom God hath set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood, to declare his righteousness for the mission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. To declare, I say at this time, his righteousness, that he might be just and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. Well, I believed in Jesus. I believed in what he did for me. I believed in the blood. And I'm not boasting about me. You, you know, I'm no good. Sometimes I say dumb things. Amen. And uh, I like to correct that. If you find that, please let me know. I'd like to correct it. Um, but it's all about that law of faith because we're we're justified by faith not by works it's all through faith that we're saved and it's all about that blood justified by his blood much more than being now justified by his blood we shall be saved through him and then it says and not only so but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ by whom we have now received the atonement Thank God for that blood atonement. And I thank God that I've received that. July 29th, 1992 is when I got saved. And I thank God that he saved me. And uh, what a blessing. We just recently had a, a young man in church who got, got gave his testimony. And he got saved the same way I did. What a blessing. That's exciting. So remember, you got to believe. Remember, it's belief from the heart now. All right, let me, let me show you that. I didn't want to go long on this, but hey, it's fun to study the Bible, isn't it? It's good to have a Bible study. Acts chapter... Um, 16 verse 30 and 31 look what it says here and they brought them out and said sirs what must i do to be saved and they said believe in the lord jesus christ and thou shalt be saved so remember salvation is by belief belief is faith faith in what faith in the blood but uh we want to see this one verse uh verse here in acts chapter 8 it talks about when you believe it's believing with all your heart new versions take this out so it's kind of sad that new versions take out this whole verse in the NIV and others. But it says, if thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And you know, as well as I know, my viewers anyway, because I've taught this for many years, that salvation isn't just believing with the head. It's when you believe from the heart in the finished work of Christ, the blood of Christ. Because what does it say over there in the book of James? Um, let's go to the book of James. I believe it's chapter 2. Here we go. James chapter 2 and verse 19. Thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. Well, the devils believe in their head that there's a God. So they have a head belief, but that's not a saving belief. Why? Because they just believe who he is. They're not trusting in what he did for them. 
Because when Jesus died on the cross, he didn't die for the devils and the demons and the fallen angels and for Satan. He died for humanity, for mankind. So the devils can't be saved. They have a head belief, but they believe it happened. But they don't have a heart belief, which is trusting with all your heart in the finished work of Jesus Christ. So it's all about the blood. And I thank God for the blood of Jesus Christ and justified by his blood. So thank you again. Oh man, I love you. And I thank you for helping me out and pointing out that thing in my video that sounded kind of weird. And yeah, I agree. That sounded kind of weird. I'm glad we were able to edit that and fix that. And now God's going to get that video out and it'll be even more concise and better. And there'll be no little parts in it that can make somebody think something weird. It will all lead them straight to the cross. And that's what it's all about. Look at this. Look what, what Paul said. Let me type this in. What did Paul say? Paul said, but we preach Christ crucified. Under the Jews a stumbling block, under the Greeks foolishness. And Paul said, look, it's all about the crucified Christ. What does that mean? What is the crucifixion? When Jesus died on the cross, he was crucified. And people that looked unto him, they saw the bleeding Christ. They saw the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. And so I'm with Paul right here. For I am determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified. Amen. That's right. Uh, my speech and my preaching was not with the enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit of the power, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of man, but in the power of God. And we sang in church, there is power, power, wonder-working power. What's the power of God? In the blood of the Lamb. You want the power? That's where the power is. It's through the blood of Jesus Christ. So God bless you. Thank you for watching. Please watch that video. It's an oldie, but it's a goodie. And now that I've edited it, it's easier to follow. And man, if you're not saved, get saved. Trust the blood for salvation. And if you are saved, many people have been asking me, Brother Breaker, what is one video that I could share with the lost person? And I usually give them a list. I usually say the one called the Gospel of Salvation, the one called the Order of Salvation, the one called the Doctrine of Blood Atonement, the one called the Doctrine of Justification, and then how to know you're saved and, and assurance and things like that. But, um, but this one is a good one to share. And I will probably share this with others. So God bless you. Appreciate you watching. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.